Hello, hello, hello. Today I am very excited because I am going to be sewing my own plushies again. Except this time I have decided to very precisely and mathematically draw out my own pattern. If you don't know what a sewing pattern is, it's a bunch of drawings that basically explain to you how you're going to sew the thing you're trying to sew. An instructional roadmap of sorts. I have never created my own sewing pattern for a stuffed animal, but I do have some experience with sewing my own clothes, so I'm hoping I can apply that knowledge to this experience. Last week I created my first ever plushie on my channel, my first official plushie. It was a bear. To create my bear, I used a somewhat complicated pattern. I thought it was simple, but according to all of your comments, apparently it was a pretty complex sewing pattern. And after that experience, I felt like I was ready to attempt to draw my own pattern. As I'm sure you can guess, I did make some mistakes, but that's okay. I like to learn by doing, and I also hate following other people's instructions, so this works perfectly for me. We're doing it ourselves. I picked out a bunch of furry fabrics at Joann's. They happened to be closing the particular one I went to, and all of the stuff was 30% off. So naturally, I bought everything I laid eyes on. It's so soft. Once all my cats body pieces were cut out, I took out my pins. As I'm sure you noticed in my last video, I actually despise pins. They hurt me a lot. But in this video, I had to use the pins because the fabric I used was very stretchy and it would just move when you were trying to cut things out. Pins are my mortal enemy. I've stabbed myself at least four times during this video and made myself bleed once, but who's counting? To start off our cat, we're starting with our head and our head gusset. I'm doing the same thing I actually did for the bear. I'm sewing from the tip of the nose to the back of the skull and pinning those in place. Next, I'm preparing my sewing machine. This is a bobbin. I'm threading the bobbin. Underneath my sewing machine, I discovered that everything is very dusty. Wow, cobwebs down there. I feel like one of you probably has a suggestion for cleaning this. Once our sewing machine is all threaded and ready to go, I'm sewing the head to the head gusset. The right side of the head is sewn and I'm flipping that outside in, inside out. Someone said that they've never heard of the term insiding something out, which I don't know if that's just my mom saying something wrong and then me in turn also saying it wrong. Anyway, the head is prepared kind of like the skull part, but now we need to sew down the snout and across the neck, leaving a little opening so we can still inside it out. And now it's time to take out our fluffing. This is not actually called fluffing. It's actually called stuffing. No, fluff, no, polyfill. You see, calling it polyfill is just not as fun. I'm gonna be calling it fluffing from now on and no one can stop me. When I was at Joann's, I went to the stuffed animal section. Believe it or not, they had that. And there was this packet of blue eyes. And I thought, you know what? This is gonna go perfectly with my blue cat. That transparent clear-ish backing is the eye socket. I don't know if that's technically what it's called, but I'm calling it the eye socket. I stuffed both of the eye sockets into the right positions and left them there for a later point. I then took out my sewing thread. This is the same thread that I have on my sewing machine and I threaded it through a regular sewing needle. I'm going to be using this actually on the snout of this cat. I wanted the snout to be a little bit more pronounced. So the stitches are meant to hold down that part of the fabric and make the nose stick out a bit more. That's done and it's time for our second piece of fabric. This fabric I am obsessed with. It literally looks like my dream paint pour results. You'll notice I cut out both both ears and a body. I didn't end up making the fabric for the body a paint pour, so just ignore that. I did, however, make the inside of the cat's ears paint pour colored. I did this by making the backside of the ears the blue color and the inside of the ears the paint pour fabric color. I sewed along the triangle of the ears and left a small opening so that I could flip the fabric inside out. Once the triangle ears were flipped inside out, I sewed that small opening closed by hand. Once the opening to the ear was closed, I wanted to attach it to the cat's head. I made sure that the beginning and the end stitches were really secure by knotting them a couple of times. And when I sewed the actual ear, I made sure that the ear was kind of curved inward a little bit because cat's ears aren't really exactly straight across. They're a little bit curved and that helped create an inner ear. 
This was much easier than the bare sewing process because you can notice that even though I'm sewing these stitches on the outside, you don't really see them because the thread matches and it kind of blends into the fur. It just goes to show you that fabric choice makes a huge difference when you're sewing stuff like this. Because there were no noses in Joann's, not even at the stuffed animal section, I had to go on Amazon and buy a huge pack for way less money of all of these different eyes and noses. I decided to use the light pink nose for this cat. I put the backing into the tip of the nose and then took out my Cricut pointy thing. I don't even remember what this is supposed to be used for. My mom loves Cricut and she got me one and I don't use it that often. I really, I really should. The nose was shockingly hard to snap into place and that's probably why it was so cheap on Amazon. It did have a lot of complaints, but you know. I used the pointy cricket thing to also make some holes in the fabric by the eyes and snapped the eyeballs into the socket. I will say the one from Joann's was much easier to snap into place. That's called koala key. Then again, it might be better if it was harder to snap into place because it's harder for it to come off and less likely for an infant to choke on it. I will not be giving the stuffed animal to any babies, so probably not relevant. Okay, we're threading another thread. This is a black thread and I'm using this to create a mouth on the face of this cat. I want the cat to just have, you know, a simple mouth, just two lines, nothing too crazy. I'm loving this so far. The cat is looking so cute and pouty, a little bit dismayed. I feel like it's fitting because most cats really do not look happy a lot of the time. So, I mean, it works. I'm also making some eyebrows that are slightly downturned to make the cat look a little bit upset. Eyebrows are done and I'm threading the thread back through to the opening of the neck, knotting it and cutting it off. After that, I'm adjusting the stuffing inside the head to make sure it's exactly the way I want it before I start sewing up and totally closing off the head neck area. That's done, and we have a decapitated cat. A very cute decapitated cat, and it's time to do the body. I'm very mathematically remeasuring what I did wrong because I realized I didn't leave enough room for the neck. Essentially, I made the gusset, the body gusset, way too short, and I didn't go all the way up the neck. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. Just know I made a terrible mistake and I had to redo a lot of stuff. And ta-da! Here is our new roadmap. I'm cutting out a new body gusset, and here are the new legs, as well as the new blue body, no longer a paint-poor body because I changed my mind. The first thing we're gonna do is sew all four of the paint-poor legs to the paint-poor gusset. I'm also just checking that the body lines up with the gusset. The idea here is that the cat will have a blue body, but underneath the cat, on the belly and underneath the legs, there will be a paint pour rainbow kind of color going on. So I'm sewing the legs to the gusset, and after I've done that, it looks like this. Now that the very colorful underbody part is done, we can do the outside. I'm gonna start with just the right side of the body, the blue part, and sew that around the feet and the under stomach area. This was actually somewhat difficult to sew, and I feel like I messed up the front paws. More on that later. Once the belly body gusset was sewn to the right side of the body, I flipped it outside, inside out, and this is what it looked like half of a cat's body. And now it's time to sew the left side of the cat's body. I did it in the exact same way I sewed the right side. Once this body was basically done, I looked at it and I was like, okay, that might be good. So I flipped it inside out and the legs in the front are a little small, but overall I think it's pretty cute. I'm pinning the top part now of the body, like the back of the cat up to the neck. And I'm not gonna sew all the way across the neck cause I need to still inside it out. But this is essentially the step where you sew closed the whole cat's body. Taking those pins out and we're gonna flip this inside out. It took a little bit of time, shook it, had to like try to get those little tiny paws through and the legs are so cute. And now it's time to stuff this cat with our fluffing. I made sure to stuff this whole cat. I started with the back feet and made sure I got the stuffing in those parts first. And then I stuffed through the whole cat. The body's stuffed and it's time to create our cat tail. So I have cut these two pieces out. I just pinned them together and then sewed them as best as I could. The tail is a little small, so it's a little harder to sew with a sewing machine. And then flipping it inside out was pretty difficult. I tried to use my safety pin hack where you push it through, but even that didn't work with the stretchy fabric. I ended up using a pencil and that worked so much easier and I got it inside it out pretty quickly with that. 
Attaching the cat's tail was rather simple. I just used some thread and my sewing needle and sewed through using a ladder stitch. So I sewed two stitches on the bottom and then two stitches on the top and then two stitches on the bottom, two stitches on top. There was a small opening on the cat's toe. So I sewed that closed and then I moved to the neck. For the neck, I did a quick easy stitch around the outside of the neck and then pulled it tight so that the thread would pull it and kind of make it like a drawstring bag. This makes it easier for me to attach the cat's head. My absolute favorite part of this process was sewing this little cat's head on. Look how cute its little head is. Its face is just adorable. I continued to stitch all the way around this cat's head, all the way around the back of the neck, and made sure everything was really secure and we weren't gonna have any decapitations. And here we have the final result of Baby Blue. I think he is so cute, little Baby Blue. I think as far as the sewing pattern goes, I nailed the side of the body. Like, it really looks like a cat from the side. From the front, the body gives off seal vibes. From the top, it's good. It looks like a cat. I think the front, the legs, are the thing that's throwing me. It's a little too small. You gotta kind of adjust it. But I love the bottom part. I like the rainbow. I like the rainbow inside the ears. Baby Blue has a very adorable personality. He loves to lay in his gray-blue blanket. He's quite a lazy cat at times, but other times he's a very curious kitten. He loves looking outside my front window and seeing what my neighbors are up to. Baby Blue also loves to rest inside the Christmas tree that I should have already taken down. And he also loves the box that I gave him. Cats love boxes, and I gotta say, Baby Blue is no different from any other cat. He loves his box. I had so much fun doing this video. I'm kind of obsessed with this concept of sewing my own plushies from scratch, and I feel like I've been able to be pretty creative with it. If you want to see more videos of me sewing, I did make a playlist of them linked right here. Not all of them are of plushies, but there are some older sewing videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!